Hi everyone, my name is Sister Eleanor. I'm a member of the Teo community of Interfaith Franciscans. And I just let my lit my candle for peace. We are a um, a network that is dedicated to peace. Dedicated to peace both in ourselves and also in our lives and in our homes and everywhere. Uh, I'd like to offer this uh, Vesper prayer for all those poor people that were down in Orlando that were victims. Victims of, um, it looks like, hate and victims of uh, violence. So we're praying for them and their families and we're praying also for our own intentions today as we always do. So I would invite you to join in and really pray for peace today. All of us together as one family, with all of our differences, with everything that we are, with our common bonds and things that may separate us ideologically. So let's come together and pray now for peace. Let me just fix the computer a little bit so that I'm kind of like not looking down on you so much, like forward more. Okay, so we have our candle lit for peace. And our peace prayer today is, Almighty God, help me to understand that peace does not come in rebellion or grieving, but is obtained through the calm of the soul. Grant that if I may be perplexed or worried today, this evening, I may have the power to control myself and wait in thy strength. Amen. So we're praying that the Lord gives us strength and gives us calm, calmness of heart and peace of heart so we can be at peace and promote peace in our homes and our communities. Today we have the feast day in the Catholic Christian calendar of St. Anthony of Padua for June 13th. St. Anthony was and is a Franciscan. He's a priest and doctor of the church, the Roman Catholic Church. He was the son of a wealthy Port Portuguese family in the 13th century. At 15, he became a canon regular at the Abbey of St. Vincent. Later, he studied theology at the prestigious Abbey of the, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the Holy Cross at Coimbra, Portugal. I hope I pronounced that right. In his role as guest master at the Abbey, he befriended, befriended Franciscan friars who were soon martyred at Morocco. Inspired that by their tragic heroism, he became Franciscan and was sent to Morocco as a missionary. In Africa, he became very ill, and he left then to go to Italy. There he met St. Francis and was called to preaching. This supreme gift took him all the way to the papal court, where he served under Pope Gregory the Ninth, and was commissioned to write a collection of sermons. He died when he was 36 and was declared a doctor of the church by Pope Pius XIII in 1946. So St. Anthony is a very prominent Franciscan. He seemed to be very knowledgeable and very good at writing letters, very good with, with language and preaching. So we pray for St. Anthony to help all of us to become good at what we're supposed to be doing, at what the Lord has in store for us. And let's pray for that today also, for St. Anthony to let us in on what it is we have to do in our life further no matter what our age at the present time. So let's ask him to pray with us today and for us. And now let us go on and set our sacred space and ask the Holy Spirit to pray in us to the Father, Mother, God. So we say, O oh God, come to our assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to our Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Now we pray Psalm 123. And this is a psalm that talks about the Lord as being the unfailing hope of his people. The antiphon we're saying today is, Our eyes are fixed intently on the Lord, waiting for his merciful help. To you I have lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens. My eyes, like the eyes of slaves on the hands of their lords, like the eyes of a servant on the hand of her mistress. So our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the rich and with the proud man's disdain. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, Mother God in heaven, we lift our eyes up to you and pray. Confound the scorn of the proud and graciously show us your mercy. Keep us ever humble and keep us always fixed on you. The antiphon again, our eyes are fixed intently on the Lord waiting for his merciful help. And now Psalm 124 we pray, and that psalm speaks of our help being in the name of the Lord. Just in the name of the Lord alone is our help and compliance with his grace. If you call upon the name of God, if you ask God to help you, he will help you. But you can't go against what he has for you, his grace. You can't say, well, Lord, I don't want this. I want it my way. Let's put it this way. Our ways have not been that great up until the present time. So let's be humble and let's look on the Lord for our help. And when he gives it, let's take that help and not try to do it our own way. So the antiphon is our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If the Lord had not been on our side, this is Israel's song. If the Lord had not been on our side when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled. And remember nowadays, Israel is you and, and I. Then would the waters have engulfed us, the torrent gone over us, over our head would have swept the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who do not give us his prey to their teeth. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Indeed, the snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So whatever it is that you are enduring, whatever it is that has got you down, whatever it is that is putting you under, or so you think, let us pray to God now to break the snare, to break the snare of the fowler, so that we can escape. Let him hold back the tide so that we will no longer be troubled and our minds will be at peace and our hearts and our bodies will be free of aches and pains. And let us say glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our prayer is, Lord, you foretold that your disciples would be despised on account of your name, but that not a hair of their heads is ever forgotten. In times of any type of persecution, defend and revive us by the power and comfort of the Holy Spirit, so that we can be freed from our enemies, both within and without, and praise your saving help. And our antiphon again is, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And now we're praying a canticle from Ephesians, 
And this canticle speaks of God as being our Savior. And the antiphon gives us the reassurance that God chose us in his Son to be his adopted children. And so let's say this, that praise be to God and Mother Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world even began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be adopted sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure. That all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us and his beloved. In him and through his blood we have all been redeemed. And all of our sins have been forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him, in the heavens and on the earth. Glory to our Father and Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the antiphon again. God chose us in his Son to be his adopted children. And now let's listen to what James has to say to us from the scriptures. Wisdom from above is first of all innocent. It doesn't have any agenda. It is also peaceable, it's lenient, docile, rich in sympathy, and the kindly deeds that are its fruits, impartial and sincere. The harvest of justice is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Amen. So now our response is, in the midst of the people he spoke with eloquence. In the midst of the people he spoke with eloquence. The Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. And he spoke with eloquence. Glory to our Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the midst of all of the people, he spoke with eloquence. And now we're going to pray the Canticle of Mary. And Mary, the mother of God, was somebody who St. Anthony of Padua really loved deeply with all of his heart. And so we're going to honor St. Anthony as we pray this canticle as a blessing for everyone here today. The antiphon is, O blessed doctor, St. Anthony of Padua, light of all of us and lover of God's law, pray to the Son of God for us. And Mary says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on all of us who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He fills the hungry with good things, and the rich he sends away empty-handed. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And again, we pray the antiphon. 
O blessed doctor, St. Anthony of Padua, light of your holy people and lover of God's law, pray to the Son of God for us. Amen. And now let's pray our intercessions where we can pray for each other and also pray to God with praise and thanksgiving. Dear God, you're worthy of all praise. You were appointed as Christ, high priest among all people and the representative before God. We honor Christ and in our weakness we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. You marvelously illuminated your world through distinguished leaders of holy men and women. Let everyone rejoice always in such splendor. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. You forgave the sins of your people when their holy leaders, like Moses, sought your compassion. Through their intercession, continue to purify and sanctify your holy people. And we pray, Bring salvation to your people, Lord. In the midst of the brothers and sisters, you anointed your holy ones and filled them with the Holy Spirit. Fill all the leaders of your people with that same spirit. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. You yourself is the, are the only visible possession of our holy pastors and ministers of all faith traditions. Let none of them, one at the price of your blood, remain far from you. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. The shepherds of all of your faith traditions keep your flock from being snatched out of your hand. Through them, you give your, your flock eternal life. Save all of us who have died, especially all of those who have died in Orlando and those for whom you gave up your life, which is everyone. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. We pray for all of the families and the loved ones of all of the people that have died in Orlando. And we pray that you comfort them through your spirit, Lord. And we say, bring salvation to your people. We pray for you, Brother Sean and Brother Rob, Brother Murray and Brother Paul, in your monastery, at Stewart. We pray that you're filled with blessing and love and with the Holy Spirit. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. We pray for all farmers everywhere. The land is now yielding its abundance. We can see it in the farmers markets here, all the beautiful fruits and vegetables. And we thank you for such abundance, Lord. And we say, bring salvation to your people. We pray for Sister Sue, who's with us, and for her children. We pray for James, her son, his exams. We pray that they went well. I understand they were today. So we pray that he's satisfied with what he's done, that he's filled with the comfort of the Spirit, and so is Sue and the rest of her family. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. We pray for the animal kingdom everywhere. We pray for global warming. We pray for an end to strife. We pray for all good things to come into our world. We pray for blessings for our Earth Mother Gaia. And we ask that you bring salvation to your people, Lord. We praise and thank you, Lord, that each of us is wonderfully made. We ask that everyone here who is not logged in, or anyone that is watching this particular broadcast, is filled with your spirit and everything in their life that is crooked is made straight and all of the hills are made level so that they may see the right path and go along the path that you have chosen for them as the highest good for all. And we say, bring salvation to your people, Lord. We ask you right now that you bless every chat petition that is on here today and that you, O Cosmic Christ, take them before our Heavenly Father, Mother God, so that they may be blessed, that they are always listened to, and that everyone will have their needs met. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. 
we ask you now, if you would, to observe a period of silence and just listen to the Lord speak to you in your heart. And we pray, bring salvation to your people, Lord. And now together, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and every living God, you gave St. Anthony of Padua to your people as an outstanding preacher and an intercessor in their need. Grant that with his teachings, as we follow the teachings of the cosmic Christ, we may know your help in every trial that we may endure. We ask this through our Lord. Jesus, who is your Son, our brother and teacher, and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We ask that the Lord bless each and every one of us here today and protect everyone, including our loved ones, from evil and bring all of us to the fullness of life in this lifetime and in the world to come. Amen. And now for our final blessing. Grant, O God, your protection this night, and in protection strength, and in strength understanding, and in understanding knowledge, and in knowledge the knowledge of justice, and in the knowledge of justice the love of it, and in that love the love of all existences, and in the love of all existences the love of God, and all goodness. Amen. Thank you for being here today. May St. Anthony richly bless you. And you all know the little adage that if you lose something, you can always say a sure prayer to St. Anthony for him to retrieve it. And many, many times, he certainly does. He was a favorite saint of my aunt who has since passed on. And... May he help you and pray for you as well. Thank you for being here. Namaste.